please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and a very warm welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Priya Sheet and I'm joining you from the Hotel Investment Conference South Asia. with headwinds like GST demonetization as well as the liquor ban, the hotel industry has had a rough 2017. But with things stabilizing now, global hotel majors are betting big on the India story. In fact, we caught up with senior global representatives from Hilton as well as the Radisson group of hotels and spoke to them about expansion as well as growth plans in India. So if I just uh, start by saying, if I scale it back to Asia Pacific, so today we have about 18,000 rooms in operation. And by the end of our five year plan, we're looking to add another 20,000 hotel keys. So if I bring that then to India, we're looking at pretty much today, we have about 90 hotels. And um, at the end of our five year plan, we, ha we expect to have about 200, which includes operating hotels and also hotels in the pipeline. In terms of investments, I know you don't give specific investment numbers, but if you could run us through how many of these hotels would be management contracts and how many of these hotels would be owned hotels? So if today the way we distinguish it is roughly between managed hotels and franchise hotels. So today it's split around roughly 50-50. Going forwards, we continue to see that there'll be a growth in um, managed hotels and also franchise and manchises. So pretty much those trends should perhaps focus a little bit more on managed hotels going forwards, but we'll still have a very strong component of franchise hotels and manchise hotels. While we understand that 200 is a big number for India in terms of expansion, run us to which categories would you be expanding into? Because uh, I understand that you all have Radisson Blue and several other seven more brands available in India, but which would be the primary brands of focus? Hmm. That's a great question. I think we really see if we look at um, how is the market in India evolving, which segments are most active, where are consumers, you know, which, which segments are they actually spending in. So we will continue to see a growth in the upper mid scale and upscale brands, which is really where our strength is also today. Um, do we think that there's going to be a shift generally as there's more, you know, economic spending power within India to more upscale brands and luxury brands? Yes, we do. And hence why we're also launching our Radisson Collection brand, which will focus more on the affordable luxury segment, so in the luxury segment, but also reachable so that people who are perhaps staying at our Radisson Blue hotels today or Radisson hotels can also be able to afford those hotels. In terms of bringing new global brands to India, uh, which would be those brands and how soon can we see them launching in India? Hmm. So the brand I mentioned just now, Radisson Collection, we will be launching this brand officially in June this year, but we already have a hotel in Agra, which is slated to join the Radisson Collection brand. So that will be actually a conversion and an expansion of an existing hotel. In terms of occupancy rates, uh, I understand that India has had one of the highest occupancy rates last year at about 65%. Uh, percent. How do you see that shaping up in terms of Radisson? So there's been a, a gentle but consistent growth in occupancies in India and I think that's somewhat also a reflection of increasing demand and also some constraints on, on supply that have been present in the last few years. We think this is going to continue. We were very strong, we we're very bullish on the actual evolution of the economy in India and we think that that's going to benefit hotels. So we've seen that also within our portfolio of hotels. Generally occupancies have been on the rise as well as rates to some extent converting into better rev parts. So in terms of uh, overall rates, uh, can we expect rates to go up significantly over the next three to five years, considering the kind of upturn that we're seeing in the industry? Mm. I mean, rationally, if we think about it, if there's demand is constantly growing and we don't see anything on the horizon that should interfere with that as much as we can possibly see that. At the same time, with some constraints on supply, that should generally mean that there should be a little bit of an uptick to rates. So just by looking at the constantly growing demand, maybe slower entry of new hotels into the market, it should hopefully translate into stronger rates. Uh, I understand that you all are also expanding your footprint to smaller cities, the tier two and the tier three cities in India, uh, and also looking at the Udan scheme to sort of aid your expansion roadmap uh, in the country. Uh, we also do understand that there are a lot of challenges associated with building new hotels and new properties in smaller areas. Uh, have you looked at all these challenges? What according to you would be the primary challenge that you would like to address in the India market? So we've been in India for more than 15 years. So I think we've got 
quite a lot of experience. And actually, even if we look at our portfolio today, we are already in those tier two cities. So we continue, go we're going to have to continue focusing on those cities, maybe even some tier three cities. Now, are they more challenging? You've got to work generally with smaller properties in those markets simply because demand for those cities is smaller. So I would say that if we look at the global landscape of brands and companies in India, we're actually pretty good at it. We've proven that we can take even conversion hotels. So if we, we've taken over some hotels that were independently managed and managed to turn those around within the space of less than 12 months and show that we can grow not only rates and occupancy, but also improve the bottom line. So those, are going, those could be seen as challenges by some companies. We've shown that we actually have a business model that can make that into an advantage and we can drive value to owners. So in terms of your overall revenue, how much percentage of your revenues would come from the smaller cities as against the larger cities? If there's a percentage that you can share? Yeah, I think it's a bit hard to give you a percentage, but of course, you know, the big, the big tier one cities are the ones that drive the most revenues, and that will continue to be the case going forwards. Do we see that gradually, as we get more portfolio and more hotels in the second tier cities, they will continue to contribute to the revenue? Of course, but still, it's those big box tier one cities and those the hotels in those cities that we, that we really want to continue focusing on, and because those are the ones that drive the most to the bottom line. When we look at the overall hotel industry in India, we've seen a lot of larger brands acquiring smaller brands, expanding their footprint. Of course, I understand that you have been growing organically, but will acquisitions be something that you would consider, considering the kind of aggressiveness and the potential that you see in the India market? So our five-year strategy plan builds really on those strong brands we have, those eight brands. And we have a strong plan, you know, our plan over the next five years is, is aggressive, right? So we really believe in the power of those eight brands that we have. And we have deployed capital and we're investing into strengthening our brand architecture, so making the brands even more strong. And also in technology so that we make sure that we also can have the technology that keeps us current and makes, makes us more able to really convert those, the business to the bottom line for owners. So within our five-year plan, it's all based on organic growth. Are we always on the lookout for investments? Yes, but currently we're focusing on making sure that that five-year plan happens and that's based purely on organic growth. First of all, run us through the kind of expansion plans that you have for the Indian market in terms of roadmap and your strategy for India. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Look, at Hilton and Asia Pacific, one in every four hotels being built today is a Hilton branded hotel. Now that gives us a position of strength and lots of confidence and we're starting to see the, the same fundamentals that have seen our rise and our success in China begin to happen here in the India market. We've got 16 trading hotels today and over the next three years we'll double that pipeline. Now that's fueled by strong rev power. Now the demand and supply characteristics in India are limited today and that means for existing owners or those hotels that are currently under construction the returns are really good. So we've seen a double digit rev power growth last year and we're forecasting a double digit rev power growth again this year and that is seeing you know a phenomenal and, and really vibrant as you can see from the, the event around us really vibrant tourism and, and hotel environment. In terms of investments what's the kind of money that you're going to pump into the Indian market over the next three to five years? I think in terms of investments, we're a hotel management company, so where I'm investing is in above property sales and marketing resources. I want to make sure that regardless of the scale that I have today and what I'm, what I'm building tomorrow, that we have the best in class revenue delivery systems to make sure that our owners and our partners continue to have a dominant position when it comes to market share. How large is the India pie as a part of the whole APAC region and how do you see this growing in terms of revenue contribution? Well, I think India is far, part of, as a financial vehicle, as part of the Asia Pacific region, it's small. I mean, India as an entire industry has less hotels than Singapore, but the Indian traveler is crucially important to all brands. 30 million outbound trips a year means the Indian traveler needs to understand branded product. They come and choose to stay on our brands offshore, and we want them to do so onshore. So if you look at India and the macroeconomics going forward, it has the potential to be the third largest lodging market in the world behind North America and China. So it's certainly something we want to be into for the long term. Will you be looking at bringing any more global brands into India? Certainly. We've got 14 brands and we've only got five deployed here today. One of the, there's two things I'm excited about. One is the expansion of the Hampton by Hilton brand, which is our focus service brand designed to capture the domestic traveller as the rise of India middle class and urbanisation, particularly infrastructure spending, continues to see demand for travel at that price point. And I am looking at an opportunity to both expand the Conrad brand. As you know, we opened another Conrad in Bangalore earlier this year. 
and bring the Waldorf Astoria brand to the India market. So how soon would that happen? Is there a timeline that you've uh, fixed for the same? Well, I think the market is ripe at the moment. Certainly, as, as I mentioned, owners' tradings are, in, uh, are strong. I will leave you with uh, we're in discussion for both of those opportunities today. You know, when you look at your global peers, many of them are looking at opening about 100 and 150 hotels uh, in the country over the next five to seven years. Going by that kind of run rate, do you think you could possibly pace up the kind of uh, growth going forward? Yeah, easily. I think from our perspective, it's right brands, right time and, and right market. Now, we're the fastest growing brand today and we have more hotels under construction than any of our global peers as it becomes to Asia Pacific. And as I mentioned, it's one in four. So our ability to catch up and outpace in, in India is certainly there. It's about timing the right brand for the right market and also making sure that our owners continue to yield results. Ultimately, our customers want a great brand experience, our team want career opportunities, and our owners are looking for returns. So we're not obsessed with being the biggest in India, but we are obsessed with making sure that we're in it for the long term and we're bringing great brands to market at the right time. Give us a sense on the occupancy and the room tariffs. How do you expect these to move up over the next couple of years? Well, occupancy for the entire India market at the moment sits at low 70s. Now, that's a good occupancy, certainly better than it was as we saw the new supply post-2008. As that increases, you'll see rates increase. As I mentioned, RevPAR is moving at double digits today. That's going to see rates continue to increase, and I would imagine that will happen for the next five years in the current cycle.